I didn't get to see my roots until I was 23 because I never went back. Well, the first time I went back, I was two years old. But then, you know, uh, some things in life doesn't go how you want it. So I was raised basically without, you know, my father and everything. But it built me. It built character, you know. And, and then when I went back to Ghana, I started to find out about my history from my African part because my, Netherlands, my Dutch part, I know. So my African part, it was uh, quite powerful. Hello, welcome to my channel once again, once again. There is a little story that I want to share with you. There is this Ghanaian man who is a custodian in a U.S. senior high school. And this man has been working there or is working there. And it seems like he has been having conversations or perhaps he had a conversation with some of the students. And I think during their conversation, what actually happened was these students, they asked him what was his dream car. And he mentioned to them the type of car he wants. So he was he was there surprisingly. And these school kids just surprised this man with a $20,000 Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler. And not knowing that's what this man told these children that this is what, this is the type of car he wishes to have or to get. And these students bought him that 2015 and see, like tears of joy. And this man was on the floor rolling, rolling. Let's watch this video. Come back and talk. Oh my God. Grateful tears rolled down the face of custodian Francis Apracou. And he dropped to the ground in disbelief seeing the 2015 Wrangler wrapped with a bow. I don't believe this will happen in my life. I'll give thanks to Almighty God for making today for me. The boys raised money to buy Apraku his favorite set of wheels because they say he's kind, supportive, and inspiring. So caring for everyone. He always has a good mood. In the school, he's always saying what's up to us. He's always giving us fist bumps and stuff. Yeah. He's a great person. He puts a smile on everyone's face every yeah. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's just a great guy. In Vienna, Virginia, if Dick Uliano, WTOP News. The thing is, uh, Lucia, that in, in America, United States, where I'm from, um, the youth, they see their parents as doing better than they have done. They see that they don't have as much opportunities as parents, as much money, as much wealth. Um, and in Ghana, you guys are the, you're the growing generation. You're the generation that's gonna move up. In America, the top, the old generation is already here. So it's very difficult for the new generation to replace the old generation. Whereas here, you're young, you're dynamic, you control the country, you have the tools, you speak English, you're tech savvy, as we know, and I just see great success. I'm going to- So clearly, this man is so grateful to these school kids because Charlie, something that I dream of having, you know, sometimes when we are in Ghana, we think every African that is abroad can afford anything. Like they have money and they can afford anything that they want. But just look at this man, 20,000. I know that $20,000 is not a small money, but this is the money that this man doesn't have to even buy himself his dream car. And it took this school kids to gather, to contribute and buy him this car. The reason why they actually bought him the car to, I'm sure you heard in the video, they say he's a custodian in their school, but he is so kind. Naturally, Ghanaians, we all know, Ghanaians are like that naturally. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, like if you see a Ghanaian, if you see a Ghanaian, you see a Ghanaian. Ghanaians are like very cool, calm, collected. So wherever we go, it is very evident. For you to see that this person is a Ghanaian because of the way we behave, our attitude, our characters. So I'm not so surprised seeing this man get his dream car from these students. Imagine students coming together to contribute money for you or to buy something that you wish to have for you. It's so amazing. It's so, so amazing. I'm sure the man has been doing something special in that school and the way he relates to these students these people these Ghanaians have that let me give you this you see this niger kids that's always you see them in accra 
the fair ones especially whenever they see you they'll just come close to you and hold you they want money they want this i remember some time ago i was watching an interview someone interviewed one of them and these small girls were like this money that they come here to beg for when they are doing that in their country nobody will give it to them but in ghana people will just give without even thinking twice people will just give without even thinking twice so clearly ghana is that place that when you come when it, if it is some of these stuffs don't worry people will just give out without even thinking and it's one of the most beautiful things about Ghanaians that I always say it, it carries us along when we travel to anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. It helps us a lot. And for me, I, I always say I'm blessed to be a Ghanaian. Yes, I'm blessed to be a Ghanaian. Thank you so much for watching. I didn't get to see my roots until I was 23 because I never went back. Well, the first time I went back, I was two years old. But then, you know... I, some things in life doesn't go how you want it. So I was raised basically without, you know, my father and everything. But it built me, it built character, you know. And, and then when I went back to Ghana, start to find out about my history from my African part because my, Netherlands, my Dutch part, I know. So my African part, it was uh, quite powerful. Um, the, the blood that I carry is from Ashanti region, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a tribe in, in Ghana, which is it's powerful. We are warriors. If I'm in Ghana, you have very beautiful places in Ghana, very rich people, but you have also very poor, the, con the controversials like this. And I go in both places and I try to help because I'm blessed with some gifts and, and stuff like that. And that's why I'm connected. I feel connected, and I see the similarities here. And, if you have a platform, like I do, I try to, to, to speak on it. I try not to shy away because, okay, you see me with a suit, nice tie, whatever, but I'm also doing behind the scenes a lot of groundwork. 